Let me see if I can switch back over. I was getting some feedback. Let me turn that off. Out of hell with it. We'll just continue on. So you guys are you guys can hear it, right? Everything's good. <laughs> Plug in your mic. What's up, six? Six, we are good. Repeat, we are good. In here, I'll start over. Hopefully I can cut the beginning of this off and uh, get cracking here. Figure eight stop or not. Um this is part of the family of eights. This is gonna be a knot that you need to know how to tie. If you can't figure out how to tie this knot, you can't move on, basically. Um, it's a very simple knot, and I'll go over it a few times to give you guys, uh, you know, an easy instructional way to do it. So here we go. We're going to build this knot right here, and it looks like an eight. And when we're done here, you're basically going to take the end of the rope. You can go underneath. I'll do it over here so you guys can see it. So underneath. Go around and then bring it on the bottom and up through and you'll get yourself an eight now once you guys know all the family of eights there's other knots out there that can do the same stuff but with the family of eights the way the the knot or the rope goes around and has a very nice bend to it you're gonna lose a third of your rope so Say it's a 9,000 pound rope, you're going to cut it down to 6,000 pounds. And that's a good majority. When you start using some of the older knots, the square knots, you're going to lose like 40% to 50% depending on what knot you're tying. So it's, it's very important, especially in a rescue realm or if you're using a thinner rope than you would normally use. And if you start punching in some safety factors, you're really going to start needing to know what knot you're tying in order to keep that rope as best you can to its maximum strength so we'll tie this knot again figure eight stop or not in case you're like me and it takes a while to learn something I'm definitely more of a hands-on kind of guy so here we go again this is a bite right here this is called a bite we're gonna go underneath we're gonna go over then we're gonna take the tip the working end of this or right here this end of this rope we're going to pick this up, bring it through the hole, and bring it up. Now, if you ended up with this, guys, if you ended up with this, and your knot looks like that, that's an overhand safety knot. <laughs> Just an overhand knot. Now, you will need to know how to tie that, and that'll be basically a knot we'll use, but that's an overhand knot. So what you needed to do was one more turn. You needed to continue all the way around and get on the other side of that loop or bite right here and bring it in. So that is a figure eight stopper knot. Now this knot is used for ropes and knots otherwise known as the SMS show. What's up, Matt from Resist the Tyranny, Guns, Gear, and Politics? If uh, some of you guys are interested, um, Send me a, just say something and I'll send you a link. All right, so that's it. Figure eight stop or not. Now, the same thing we just did, and I'll do it in the air so you guys can see it. You just go around like this, and you have a stop or not. It's a very simple knot. It's harder when I lay it on the ground, but at least you can see it. You can see it uh, made without my hands in the way for the most part. So that's that. Now if we screwed up, I'll show you again while it's up in the air. This ends up being an overhand knot. This knot is used, but this knot is more for, for making us basically at the end of a knot. Like, And we're going to do this knot next to figure it <clears throat> on a bite. So there would be this thing, right? So we have a bite. This is the bite, like I've said before. But then you could do an overhand knot. As a little safety at the end if you wanted to so that's that's why you need to know the overhand knot as well all right so we're gonna tie this knot and as you see here there's a loop here <clears throat> the reason why there's a loop there is this is where we would attach a carabiner say this was a 
here's the top of the mountain up here and then we're gonna we're gonna re repel down or no we're not gonna repel down someone's gonna lower us down we would attach here to a carabiner and then they would lower us down or you can do a soft point connection which is basically I'll show you that knot in a little bit <clears throat> and you'll end up with that same knot but it's called something else so like I said this knot which we just did figure eight stopper knot right is the exact same thing that we're going to do but we're going to we're going to double the rope so now it's like four ropes basically and we're going to go around just like we did with the other one all the way around and through and then we're going to end up with the figure eight on a bike. So that's that knot. Let me tie the one over here so you guys can see what we're trying to do each time. Hopefully that helps out. All right, so we're trying to tie this knot. Or no, we're not trying to. We are tying this knot. <clears throat> not enough wraps for that. Not enough wraps on the knot for that. All right. So here we go. Listening to the chatter. Can you guys actually hear what I'm saying, or is it just chatter? All right, let's do this again. I'll do it so you guys can see it. Bring the rope around. Goes over the top of it. And then you're going to go underneath it and up through. And you're going to pull it. Let me clean it up a little bit. And then you end up with a figure eight on a bike. Sounds good now. Okay. Thank you guys out there. All right. So that's that now. Who's out there trying it right now? Who's got rope in their hands? Trying some, learn some knots, or maybe you already know them. Maybe you just need to go over them again. Let's see. So I don't see Matt one in, which is fine. All right. So we're going to move on. You can always uh, go back to the video. Figure eight on a bend. Figure eight on a bend. So basically what we're doing is when you see this rope right here, let me get another piece. Let me see if I can catch the house on fire. Go get your gear bag, fuzzy to you. We got time. We'll be yapping here for a long time. All right, hot nylon burned into your skin. Look at that. Bam. Got to love that. All right, let me do that one more time because sometimes I'm just not smart enough not to do it again. But I'll get this in. Nice. All right. So when you hear the word bend, okay, and the definition – which makes no sense. Well, it makes sense, but there's better ways to uh, say it. Let's find it here. The joining of two ropes are webbing together. Well, that can be also be a knot, so I don't like that definition. My definition of a bend, can you throw a gun in there somewhere, cock it, do something, break it. The, the mean not me. Yeah, sure, I can actually. All right, there's my new carry gun. Bam. Glock 43 today is what I carried. All right, so when you have a rope, uh, earthquake, so when you have a rope, <coughs> and you attach another rope to it, <clears throat> or you attach a knot to it, 
like a square knot, and I'll do that knot. And we'll learn how to tie that one as well. But you got to understand what the definition or the meaning behind the word bend is. All right, here you go. The meaning behind bend, I'll make it a little smaller so it'll fit the camera for sure. When you, you, when you hear the word bend, when you're tying a knot, it should be telling you that there's going to be two opposing tails. Okay, now I made, I gave you guys two different color P cord so you can see the difference easier. But basically, this goes up, around, and back. This is a square bend. All right, also known as a knot, but it's really a bend. And I'll, you'll catch me saying knot as well. So this is what a bend is, opposing tails. Okay. Now, when you do, which knot are we even doing? You got me sidetracked. Hey, Sir Viral. We're doing a figure eight bend. All right. To, in order to do a figure eight bend, and I'll just use this one since it's already here. Let me get rid of the figure eight on the bike. You're going to tie a figure eight. Like that. Like we learned our first knot we learned. But what we're going to do is we're going to adjoin two ropes of the same size together. So we're going to do a figure eight bend. So I'm going to follow this rope exactly, just, I mean, literally right on this rope, exactly how it goes. No shortcuts. I'm going to go back underneath, and I'm going to go back through this hole here. And you're going to hear people try to claim that this is a figure eight follow through, and they will be mistaken. I have a tail on this side and a tail on this side. This is a figure eight bend. Now, I will show you what a figure eight follow through is. So this rope here you could utilize, say you don't have enough, say you have a lot of rope but they're short, and you want to try to keep as much of what the rope is rated for, this is a knot you could use. There's a couple other knots, but this would be a knot you could use in order to attach two ropes of the same size diameter. Tail equals bitter end. All right, so we'll do that again. Do that again because sometimes it just takes more than once. All right, so you learn the figure eight stopper knot. It's basically an overhand knot, but you go one half turn, you go around one more half and go in. Like a kid again, what's up? All right, so here we go. Now remember, when you're doing this, you have to go from opposing tails. You have to go opposing tails. Now I could do the same thing going this way, but that's not what we're doing. We're trying to build an overhand bend. And the word bend, you guys know what the word bend is now. It's opposing tails. As a rule of thumb, I'm sure there's an exception to the rule. But it's just an easy way for you guys to remember. Okay, so now that I've fed it all the way through, I'm going to tighten these down. And I'm, it's very important when doing knots that you clean them up. Make them look as good as you can. All right, so there is a figure eight bit. All right. So now here's the difference. Remember how we talked about a figure eight follow through but haven't tied it yet? Here's the reason for the figure eight follow through. This is a tree. And I need to be able to tie what will be a figure eight on a bite.
Figure it on a bite. That looks like crap. Almost got it. Like I said, the knot needs to look good. Why does the knot need to look good? The reason why the knot needs to look good is so that people can identify it easily, especially if you're getting ready to climb over an edge and it's a four or five, 600 foot fall or shit, anything over 12 feet, basically. It's gonna hurt a lot. All right, so there's that knot. So we learned how to tie this knot, the figure eight on a bite. The problem is I wanna wrap this around a tree, but I just don't know how. I can't go, I can't go over the huge tree and then bring it all the way down to the base of the tree, right? I guess you could if you had like a helicopter or a, you know, a really tall ladder. But basically, there's way better ways to do it. Okay. And I can't pick up the tree, put the loop there, and then put the tree back down so I have my bomb-proof anchor. Because we're looking for bomb-proof anchors, especially if this is going to be some type of somebody's life's going to be hanging on this thing, you're definitely going to want to, uh, you know, make sure that your anchor is bomb-proof, as we call it. So the figure eight follow-through is almost similar to what you learned earlier. So I go around and make a figure eight on a bike. Stopper knot. Sorry, figure eight on a, a figure eight stopper knot. Now I go around the tree. So I didn't... I didn't tie it at the end because I need I need a rope here. So this could be depending on how fat the diameter of the tree is. Say the tree is five feet in diameter or ten feet in diameter. I'm gonna need enough to go around the tree and then feed this in back through this way. And this is called a figure eight follow through. So if you don't have anchor straps, you don't have additional carabiners, say you're going real minimalist, you're going hiking but you keep roping your bag, all of a sudden you're stuck on some on some cliff or the weather's gotten to shit and you need to get out of a out of something. You're not gonna carry all the stuff that are, a team of rescuers is gonna carry because it's just too much weight, too much stuff to carry. So you gotta think minimal. You gotta think, what can I do? What can I do or use so I don't have to carry this amount of equipment? So, okay, I know those knots, so I can get rid of a few carabiners there, carry some webbing maybe, so on and so forth. So you got to really think about what, what you can do. And the more knots you know, the, the ability you'll have to limit what you're using. So, okay, let's get going on this. This is the tree. Now I'm going to walk around the tree, and I'm going to take the rope, and this little mini bat is not going to stand up. So just pretend it's still there. I'm going to go around the tree. And then I'm going to place this back through. Now see how when we're all done with this, the tail is going to be going this way. This is a figure eight follow through. Where as we talked about a bin, the tails ended up going the other way. So this will tell you that you're going to make a figure eight. You're going to go around something and then follow it back through. But you will end up with the tail. You will end up with the tail pointed back down on where you started from. Make sure you follow it correctly or you won't have a safe knot. There'll be no point of tying the knot if you don't do it correctly. This is something you don't want to get a B in class on because someone may die. All right, so this is a figure eight follow through. The tail is shown back towards the end this went around the tree so we have the tree going and now you no longer need an anchor strap you don't need two inch tubular webbing one inch tubular webbing you don't need a carabiner normally this would be here there would be a carabiner so here's the carabiner then there would be a tree that's not gonna stay and then there'd be an anchor strap around the tree and then the carabiner would collect into the anchor strap. So right there, we just got rid of one carabiner and one anchor strap or piece of webbing. So one less, two less things you needed to carry. All right, we'll do that again because that might have kicked somebody's butt. Oops, I just did an overhand. All right, here we go. 
So we go around the object. And then we come back down through and we follow this exact rope right here. This one right here. So we go around. I'm trying to keep my hands out of the way so you guys can see it. All right, and then we're going to clean this up. Now, this knot here is basically that same knot I showed you, the figure eight on a bite. You know, is this simple? If I didn't need to go around something, I could just go like this real quick. I don't have to go through the hassle, all that, all that other stuff, feeding it back through and so on and so forth. But I'm going to clean this up. But if you needed to go around an object, that's what you've got to do. You just got to. Okay, so now let's say, let's say you don't have a bomb-proof anchor here, but you do have some additional anchor straps and so on and so forth. This can be used for two things. This can be used for litter baskets, just a little more. Let me get a bigger piece of rope. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to make a double figure eight on a bite, or they call it a figure eight double loop. All right, so here we go. We doubled it again. If I went through and I went around like we did with the other ones, I went through, I mean around and underneath and pulled here, I would end up with that figure eight on a bite. Okay, but we're not going for that right now. We're, we need two loops here. We're doing a, a, double, uh, a double figure eight on a bite. So I need two loops here. So all you do, you're going to need some rope for this. Okay. We go down, we got a, dang internet has broke my bank. I just got another Dell. All right. So go through here, go underneath, go over. Okay. And then here's the difference. Normally I would go and I would come up through here for the figure eight on a bite, but I'm not going to do that this time. I'm going to put this over here. I'm going to take this bite right here. This is hard to do holding these ropes like this. Hold on a second. All right. I'm going to take these ropes like this. So here's my eight. If I went through, in case you guys missed it, that would be my figure eight on a bite. But I'm not going to go through that time. I'm going to put those ropes there. I'm going to grab these ropes. I'm going to take this. And I'm going to put my hand through the loop, grab these two ropes right here, bring this over the top, and drop it down here with these two extra bites right here. And then I'm going to pull. And before I pull it nice and tight, I'm going to clean it up so it looks decent before I get to... Uh... Okay, so now, now I have two bites here. So a double, one, two, figure eight on a bite. Okay, now this knot <clears throat> can be used where any of the single knots were. Like the figure eight on a bite, you could just do a double figure eight on a bite if you wanted to. Say you wanted, say you wanted the carabiner to have two attachments here. Or other reasons would be this. <clears throat> if you offset this, Right, I captured this. Let me tear this part real quick. All right, so I go around like this. And go like this. This time, I don't pull them all evenly. I pull them. So they're to have a different length to them. 
and I'll clean this up. Okay, so now, say I don't have a bomb-proof anchor, but I have I have I have two okay anchors that would combine together making would make a bomb-proof anchor. Now I have the ability to capture this tree, right? Now I can't do this. I, I can't go in here unless it was a cut tree. Say it was a freshly cut tree at five feet high, and I could just reach over the top and put this on. That would be, that would be perfect. But we're not going to cut a tree. We're just going to basically utilize anchor straps. So... I could have a tree here. I could have a tree here that's tied to it. And then another tree right here. So that would be another reason why you could use this. There's a hundred reasons why you could use it, but for this, we can just call it that simple. So you have the ability to do this. <clears throat> you could have it where you could use a rescuer and a victim. We wouldn't normally do stuff like that because we have a um, set of fours and all sorts of other gizmo gadgets. But if you needed to do something like this, you can make you can make uh, you can make it work. So I'll tie it one more time. So you're gonna go around. This is your bite. Go underneath. Over the top. You're going to put these two underneath here. Reach in here. Grab those two. Bring this down to the bottom. And pull up. And see how that's not all the way to the bottom? You got to figure out where that needs to, which rope needs to be pulled in order to get that tight. Figure eight, a double figure eight on a bite. Or also known as a figure eight double loop. All right. Now, here's a cool knot. It's called a high, high strength tie off. Okay, we talked about rope. We use 12 millimeter life safety rope. Depending on the manufacturer, it holds 9,000 pounds to about 12,000 pounds. Okay, so we'll pretend this is half inch Kern Mantle rope. So we'll just be, we'll make it simple. We'll say that it's, it's worth 9,000 pounds. And I wanna do a high line system. And when you do highline systems, the way your anchors are set up, you increase you increase the load by basically uh, more than double. I think it's four times. So if I have an anchor here and an anchor here, and I want to stretch it across the canyon, I need to make sure well that my rope is going to hold the weight. But along with that, I need to make sure that my anchors are going to be able to hold the weight. Because once I do something like this with this angle, say this is the tree in a tree, and the weight is being applied like this, things start multiplying. Okay, when you have two anchors that are back here like this, say the weight of this is 100 pounds, and this is an anchor, and this is an anchor, this may only hold you know, 55 and 55 in order to hold that 100 up. When you do this and you have an anchor over here and an anchor over here and this is a canyon in here, and you have 100 pounds, which ain't is nothing, this is going to have to hold like 400 pounds and 400 pounds. So it's kind of crazy how the load angle decreases capacity as well. Yes. So your equipment, so you basically have – we're going to pretend this is a 9,000 half-inch Kern Mantle dynamic rescue rope, not a, 
not dynamic, static rescue rope. We're going to not pretend that it's dynamic. Dynamic is a climbing rope that is used to stretch. So if you have a climber that falls, it's like a kind of like a bungee cord. You don't in, end up with that shock right on the guy's back or on his pelvis from the harness. So rescue rope is made not to stretch as much because we're basically using it for lifting stuff up, hauling and lifting and that kind of stuff. So we don't want the stretch. When we pull when we pull a foot of rope, depending on what your mechanical advantage is, we want to be able to capture as much as we can. We don't want the stretch. So hopefully that makes sense. All right. So what we're doing now is a high strength tie off. So back to the reason why we need to learn this knot. Here's, a, here's an anchor on this side, and here's an anchor on this side. Remember how we talked about every knot that I put into it, you basically lose a third of the rope's maximum capacity. So if I put a knot anywhere in the system, like if I went like this, and this is just a bullshit knot, but if I go like this, say this was to hold, right? I have, I have just lost a third of the capacity of this rope. So no longer is it 9,000 pounds, it's 6,000 pounds. Well, that kind of sucks, right? So a knot we utilize, especially in high lines, <clears throat> where we need max ability for the rope, where we try to get as much out of the rope as we can, we're going to basically do a, a high-tension tie-off. So we're gonna we're gonna actually we're gonna tie a figure eight on a bite. So you guys have learned that one today or sometime before. So this is a figure eight on a bite. All right, there's a, almost a good looking knot. Let's see here. All right, good enough for today. So here's a figure eight on a bite. High tension. We're going to wrap this five times. You could go more if you have the rope. But if you can get it where it's basically kind of biting on itself, is that five? Probably not. All right. So say this is a tree. And I put a carabiner, which I for some reason don't have with me right now, which makes no damn sense. I'm gonna tie, I'm gonna put a carabiner in here and I'm gonna clip it to this right here. Now, all the weight in the world, like right now, all the weight in the world, if you have enough wraps on it, since this is small, the smaller the object is, the more wraps you should use because you're getting less friction. So I'll just do this real quick just to show what I'm talking about. So I'll get crazy and do quite a few wraps. Now when I put the carabiner in here and I click it to here, right, as the weight's applied, it's basically biting on itself. And this will stay loose. This will look like this, but all this friction and all this rope in here, okay, Squeezing on itself, squeezing on itself, squeezing on itself. This thing will stay loose like this. So there is essentially no knot because this thing is not in – it's it's attached to a carabiner to this rope, but it's not in – it's not being used per se. So I'm getting full – I'm getting the full 9,000 pounds out of this rope. Does that make sense, everybody? All right, so we'll do it one more time. And a high strength tie off. So if this is a tree, I walk around. I just keep walking around this tree. Walking around, walking around the tree. You don't have to have them interlaid or underneath or through or anything. You just wrap them around. And then you click that bad dog in right there. Carabiner to there. And that's it. Let me grab this here. So this is all nice and tight. 
took all the tension out of it. This thing will just sit here like that with a carabiner in it. And this will be tight as hell. And it'll just sit there. And this will just be just, just basically laying there clicked in with a carabiner. So that is a high strength tie off. Fuzzy to you, fuzzy to you says we never use dynamic ropes. Well, I'm assuming he's not a climber because it sounds like he'd be in the rescue realm of things, which she is, or she is. All right. So before we move on, does anybody have, did anybody get screwed up on a knot and needs a, needs to try it one more time? Because we're going to start getting into the, the bends and the hitches. <coughs> I'm going to drink some iced tea here. And then we'll get crack a lacking. All right. I'll start, and if you guys say there's a knot you need me to go back to, I'll just come back to it. We are doing what some people would call a square knot. I even call it a square knot sometimes, but it's rightfully so should be called a square bend. Now this is the one you hear where people say right over left and then left over right. And then you end up with this. Now you know you'll have the knot right and correctly tied if you can go like, here's the magic trick. Everybody pay attention. Like that. Then you know it's a square knot. Some people tie their shoelaces like this, their work boots, if you're going to be wearing them for hours upon hours. They'll tie a square knot in it just so hopefully it doesn't go out. Um, you can join two pieces of rope of the same diameter, but remember I showed you a better knot. This one will slip easier than the one I showed you, which was a figure eight bend. Bend. Remember? Damn it. Stick with me. All right. So, square bend, square knot, depending on what you want to call it. Now, there's a couple ways you could tie it. You could go like this if you wanted to. You make a bite, you stick the rope in, you go around, and then you throw it back in the hole. And you end up with that. So, that's a square knot, square bend. Okay? Square bend. Now you can use that overhand knot that we talked about. If you really can't remember the knot I showed you earlier, the figure eight bend, you could go like this and tie an overhand knot and do that again. And it's basically an overhand safety knot. So as this slips, let's just pretend it's slipping. All right, slipping, slipping. There's so much weight on here. These things will basically slide up, and hopefully the overhand knot will save you from falling to your death. But don't use this knot if you're going to have a live body on it. Do not use that knot for any live stuff. I repeat, do not use that knot for live stuff. Okay, butterfly knot. Everybody good? Let's, give me a, we got 14 people, 458,000 people watching right now. Could be exaggerating by 458,000 people. We got quite a few watching though. Okay, so we're going to do a butterfly knot. Now before we do a butterfly knot, This knot is designed <clears throat> to be multi-directional pulling. So if this is the mountain, or let's use a let's use a water rescue as an example. Say this is a river, right? And the river's flowing this way. So you got you got river right, river left, okay, and the water's going this way. 
and we run we run depending on what we're doing say we run a rescuer right here in a, in a boat all right so the boats what do i got for boat the boats like this it's tied in <clears throat> and here comes the here comes the victim all right we could utilize this knot i'm showing you to be multi-directional so you can pull from the river this way or from the river on this and I'll show you why that's important here in a minute. All right, so this knot is easy. There's two ways to build it. <clears throat> you can go like this. This is my left hand, and I have an L right here. All right, so you throw it in here towards the inside of your palm. So you go inside, and then you go outside, and then you go in the middle. Then you take the this rope, which is towards your fingertips, or the outside rope. You pick it up. You go over the top of the two other ropes, all the way underneath, and then you're going to end up with this little bite right here. Sounds like it's snowing outside. And you're going to end up with that knot. <clears throat> now, some knots, if you pull them the wrong way, and let's just say uh, this is a directional figure eight. Okay, so here's the difference. This knot can only be pulled in one manner, and that's this way. If you pull this knot this way, it kind of breaks apart and isn't, isn't worthy of what it's designed to do. So this knot here, which that looks like crap, is a directional figure eight. So it's only to be pulled in this direction towards my watch. Okay, now this knot, the butterfly knot, is a multi-directional. It doesn't matter which way you pull it, it does not care. So like the example we used in the river, <laughs> yeah, sounds like snow. <laughs> I think it's a uh, what do they call it out here? I'm learning all these new phrases. Uh, rain ice. Never heard that before. All right, so if this was the boat, right? And you had rescuers in here and the guy's coming down. With this knot, it can be pulled this way to get the boat over, or it can be pulled this way to get the boat over. All right, so a butterfly knot. Let's tie that one more time. Must be in Minnesota, heavy ass snow. Close, feels like it anyways. No, in North Carolina. So we got, let me get a little more rope here. You got inside, outside, middle, take the far right end or towards the fingertips. You grab it. Go over the top, underneath those two. And then when you pull it, you'll end up with this. And they basically, it's cock and balls. Uh, you'll end up with the butterfly wings here. All right. Great not to know. You could use this if you had a bunch of rope and you needed to make a ladder. You could utilize this. Keep tying these up the rope. You could use it as a step ladder. You put your foot in here, grab the next one. You know, it'd be a lot of knots you'd have to tie, but something out of the box you could use to climb up a tree or something if you're, or to climb down something. If you needed to climb down and you didn't have any, any gear and all you had was a piece of rope and you had a long piece of rope that was uh, worthy of being on it, you could you could basically tie a bunch of these and just walk down. You know, I can sit here with another one. I don't rope so long. But I'm sure you understand what I'm saying. So here's another one. All right, so you could just basically have a ladder. You could climb down, step in that one, climb down, step in that one. Now remember this P cord, this stuff here is 550 cord, so it's only rated for 550 pounds. 
Something you can try, which is kind of fun, is you just get on it. Something where you're not very high off the ground. <laughs> you go down on cockaballs. No, Tony. That's what it looked like. All right. You can tie this. You can tie this to say a stationary ladder or something like a permanently mounted ladder on a building, and then you can just be like a foot off the ground, clip it to your harness, right? You tie a knot, and you can just start cutting these because inside here is smaller pieces. I'm sure most of you guys are familiar with cord. It looks like that. So you basically have the mantle and the sheath. Let's see, current mantle. So you have the current and the mantle. But that's not current mantle rope. Um all right, double fisherman's bend. So this is where you need to learn how to tie a double overhand. So we'll tie an overhand knot. And this is the easiest knot. This knot, everybody knows how to tie. So you go around, and you have an overhand knot. Okay, this would be basically the start of tying your shoe. Where you'd have the two pieces and you would go around. That'd be the overhand part. That's more confusing. So you basically just go around and tie an overhand knot. Now what we're gonna do is a double overhand knot. So I use my two fingers like this, and I'm gonna wrap it twice. So one, two. And that's what it looks like on the end, just two. Now I did go and cross over, so there's an X right there. And then I'm gonna feed this through that hole. And a lot of you, a lot of you fishermen out there, you probably know this knot. And what you'll end up with is a double overhand knot right there. Okay. So what we're going to do is, this is a double overhand, but we're going to make a double fisherman's bend. So remember the word bend is opposing tails. If you just showed up or you showed up a little while ago, you're going to put the other end of the rope, and normally this would be the same color, same piece of rope, but I'm going to use a different rope just to show you a little bit easier what it looks like. So it's going to go through, through that those two loops right there, okay. And then what I like to do is just flip the rope over, and I'm going to do that same thing. I'm going to go one and cross over, two, and then that hole in between the two fingers. I just put that rope in there, okay. And then when you pull this together, just make sure it stays in the right position. And you're going to see that X right there. You're going to know <clears throat> you're going to know the knot is right. And this knot needs to be right, especially for a lot of the applications that it is. You can't really don't screw this one up because it's pretty important. But you're going to see an X. You're going to see one of them that goes underneath and then one that goes above. So you're going to apply the pressure to that and that's going to that's going to tie onto there nicely. And then this one is the exact same. You're going to see the X again. So there's the X. Okay, so that's the X. And you're going to pull these together.
And what's nice about this knot is the harder you pull these together, the stronger this knot becomes. So you have the two X's. You'll know if it's right if you can do that. If you can slide it apart and then pull it back together, you'll know it's right. Double over always snaps. Double over always snaps. Maybe for fishing. Add a double pylon knot on the other end with 20 feet slack and you're ready for a 12 storm surge. Yeah. All right. So basically, I'm going to pull the right ones here. You slide these together. You end up with a double overhand fisherman. Or a double fisherman pin, sorry. And it's just basically a double overhand and a double overhand with the other rope inside of that. All right. So this rope, uh, what we just built, basically would be utilized for building prussics. Prussics. What are prussics? Let me get rid of this rope here real quick. A prussic. Let's see. Let me see if I can show you the best way to do this. All right. So I'm going to build a loop. Let me get another piece of rope. See if I can find a short one here. Probably not. Oh, here we go. All right. Oh, another one of these damn things. Okay. My kids were building some uh, this kind of stuff. You know, the bracelet deals. All right. So this one's attached to this one, but we'll make it work. Let me burn another, uh, let me burn some more fingers real quick. Ow. Ow. Hot. Oh, this one's all jacked up. Get the fire department ready on this one. This one's ready to torch up. All right, we'll call that good enough, just for safety reasons. All right, so this is the whole thing. Unfortunately, we got this thing's mended together with the kids doing bracelets. This is the only short piece I have. So here's what we're doing. This is going to be a pressic loop. So I'm going to do a double over. I'm basically going to go to Acadies. Let's throw that in here. Let's do this again. Looks like crud. Gotta make them look good. All right. Okay. So here we go. We have a loop now, a continuous loop. And with this knot, you don't ever really have to worry about it slipping through. So you cut it nice and close, one inch or thumb's width. Cut that off, make it look nice and pretty. Cut this off to here, make it look nice and pretty. And now you have a loop. So if this was 8 millimeter, 9 millimeter cordage, mostly eight and nine. We use for radium releases, for 
um, set of fours, all sorts of stuff. But basically, we are going to make a loop. Now what you'll see is what some would call a lark's head or lark's foot. So you basically go around an object with the loop, just pull all this crap through, and you end up with that. Okay, that's a lark's foot, lark's head. Depending on, depending on where you trained, whatever the case is. So now we utilize what is called a three wrap prusik hitch. So we're going to continue and we're going to go and we're going to keep going until we get three wraps. Now, if we make two wraps, it's probably hard for you guys to see on the screen. My hand's in the way. This right here is a double wrap, more of a self-rescue kind of deal. We basically just spend a little more time. If you didn't have time and you're hanging off of a rope and you needed to capture something via your main line or something and you wanted this to be like a step, because your uh, ascender, your ascender got caught in your shirt, or your uh, maybe you have long hair and you're repelling, and in your break bar rack, your hair got stuck in there, and you're all jammed in there, and you just have to basically come up with a way to get the weight off of the the friction device, so you can get your hair out or your shirt or whatever the case is, maybe a glove and you didn't have time to wrap it three times, but basically wrap it three times, do it the correct way, and you're gonna have a triple wrap prusik hitch. So right there. Now on a half inch rope that we use, this would be an uh, eight millimeter cordage, okay? And we can utilize this for lots of cool stuff, making mechanical advantages. So say this is the main line rope, and we're trying to haul this way. I could attach this on here, and I could attach this to a haul system or whatever the case is. And then as I pull, it's going to basically bite down and capture the rope and give me some gripping on the thing. Things we use this for are for breaking. So at the end of a, at the end of a, say we're we're gonna lower somebody over the side of a cliff with the Stokes. This would be set up to our basically our anchor and our belay device right here. So for some reason the guy's not manning this and they have a fall or a shock to the system. This will, as it slides down the rope, it's going to catch, and then it's going to stop the rope from continuing through the, the friction device, whatever it is, brake bar rack, J rack, U rack, um, whatever it is. I wouldn't, normally up here we wouldn't use an, an eight plate, but we'd use a brake bar rack. Now, if you needed to use this, this, this rope can be used in the prepper world, the bushcraft world. Uh, for lots of things say I needed Say I had a grappling hook or I had some makeshift hook and I had a nice piece of rope and I needed to get up up into a tree or up into a building I Could throw I could throw the main rope up and over say it connects to something I Can put these I can attach three of these so you'd have a center you'd have a center connection point and then you can have two to your feet. And your foot would be in here. And as you're stepping, this is capturing. See how it bites on itself like that? And it's going to squeeze onto that rope. And then after you put your foot in the other one, the weight will get off of this one. You can slide it up the rope more. And then you put weight on it again. And then slide the other one up. So you have three points of contact. You'll have one of these that would be on your hip, 
and then you'd have two leg ones, depending on how you wanted to do it, if you wanted a frog. There's a bunch of different ways to do it, but basically that's that's a cool knot for you guys that need to get up something or whatever the case is. All right, so we got, which ones did we get a chance to go over? All right, I wish I had a carabiner here. Let me see if I can find something that will work as a carabiner. Nothing. I don't see anything. All right, so I'm going to try to pull off a Munter hitch. A Munter hitch is a pretty cool hitch that you can use if you want to belay somebody that's lead climbing. If you wanted to lower somebody down and you didn't have any gear, but maybe a carabiner or some type of loop, you could utilize this. Let me get rid of this knot here so I can continue on. The Prusik and the Climb Heist. I have to look. See, that's the problem with knots. There's so many different names for the same thing. Let me search this real quick. And I'll tell you if I can help you or not. Oh, the only difference is this. Damn it, I don't have a loop now. Um, I'll just make shift this knot. Okay, don't mind this mess. <laughs> The climb heist, I think I'm saying that right, climb heist knot. So the difference between the three wrap, like I went around, remember, and I kept feeding them all the way through and then came through here. This one, you just basically wrap it. So like I go up the rope, one, two, three. I'm one, two, three, yes, three. And then you, instead of feeding it through and being a big pain in the ass, you're just basically going like this. And this is also capturing itself, right? So everything's getting squeezed in there. So all these going around here with the pressure on here is pulling onto there. And there's nothing wrong with this knot at all. It's a nice strong knot. I'm trying to test it right now to see if uh, okay. So it's only it's only one direction. You can only use it in one direction, so that's a negative. If you needed more than one direction, so like with the prusik, like the one I just showed you, and I guess I'm gonna have to build again. But no, if you wanted to utilize this, maybe go up a building. I would be, it looks and appears to be really good. We don't use this. And the only reason why we use we use the three wrap or the triple wrap press -it hitch is because that's what we do all our brake devices with and everything else. So I think it just makes it simpler. And it might break easier, meaning this right here, you can basically grab that and slide it up the rope. I would say it would work fine in, you know, wet weather conditions. Maybe be a little more care, car, careful, careful. But yeah, that's a good one. Let me see. That was a survival. I think that brought that up. Yeah, holds in both directions. He says. I don't think it does, buddy. All right. 
this is the same width from here to here. And I'm trying on a polished piece of wood, which is stupid anyways. Uh, it wants to slide. It could be the rope. It could be the bat. I mean, it's, it's starting to catch because it's getting fatter here. I don't know. I'd have to try it when I get back to work, when I get all the ropes. But that's cool. Oh, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, it works good this way. Like, that's nice. But when you do that, it's kind of, it may work, but see how it's kind of being pulled in the wrong direction? Kind of slips a little bit. I don't know. I'll have to get back to you on that one. But that was a good call. That's a good knot. All right. So we got a, a clove hitch. This one you always hear about bushcrafters using. You always hear people talking about the clove hitch. This is like one of those knots that the kids and uh, Boy Scouts learned. There's nothing really wrong with this knot. We use it for some stuff, but but it's a uh, it's more of a like a, a Boy Scout kind of knot. So you're gonna grab the rope. And it's good for round stuff. It doesn't have to be round, but round round's preferable. So I want to capture this. And we utilize, uh, the reason why we use this knot is for hoisting equipment up. Like say, <clears throat> say there's a fire and for some reason a uh, saw broke down and we wanted to haul another one up, we could throw our drop bag over. They could attach the saw to it and we could send it on up or a fireman's axe or whatever the case is. So you would have a clove hitch. So I go around and I make the X. And then I always tell everybody to shoot for the X. So that just basically means I go under here, shoot for the X. All right. Now when you use this rope, this is the end of a rope. And then this is the long end of the rope going up to the building. You can tell if you tied it right when you pull it. Basically, when you go like this, it makes like when you're wrapping a present on the bottom, it, it goes across and around and goes the other way right here. So like this rope goes around and underneath, and this one goes this way. So if I wanted to hoist this up to a building, you do a clove hitch and one or two half hitches. So I would just throw a couple of these bad eggs in here real quick. And then the pressure of these ones keeps it from spinning and falling. And this one basically just squeezes up against it like a boa constrictor. And then you can, you can haul it up. And this can be anything, a pike pole, a two by four, a shit, it can be just about anything. So clove hitch and two half hitches. And we didn't really go over a half hitch yet, but it's basically just a twist in the rope. So clove hitch, two half hitches. We'll do it again. So you go over. What's the alternative to which one? You make the X. Go around. So I'm going to go through here. I'll try to make it so you guys can see it. So I'm shooting the X. Okay. So now I have two ropes and two ropes. One's coming out like this, and one's going through the middle. So you, you pull it nice and tight, and then you pull it in the direction you're going to work. So it's going to be this way. So a half hitch is me going, people will try to go like this, and that's not a half hitch. You have to go and make a, a loop, like cross it over like that, and you slide it down where you want it and pull, and then you do the same thing and pull. 
And then you have a clove hitch, two half hitches. Oh, alternative to the clove hitch. Well, it depends on what you're trying to do. Um, so if I was doing this stuff where I wanted to pull shit up a building, right, say in the firefighting world, I would just use a clove hitch. The reason why a clove hitch is great is because, say this is a, say this is a pike pull or something, I can just go like this, I can whack it on the ground, this shit comes loose, and now I have a tool without having to do a bunch of knots. So this is a good knot. <coughs> Nope, it's not a knot. It's a hitch. Sorry. Um, your alternative. I'm trying to think. If it wasn't this bat and you had like a head here, like say it was here, you could do. Let's see if I got something else that I can wrap up. Um. No, you could basically do a figure eight on a bite, right? And you would slide the figure eight on a bite down through, pretend this is a fireman's axe. Hopefully it's in the view. So this would slide down. This would go around the neck of the axe. Say this is the pick over here and the, the blade or the axe portion on that side. Then you would go around do a half hitch you do a half hitch and a half hitch and then you could bring that aloft so I'll show you and it would be like that but with a bat the best option is a clove hitch are the half hitches to stop the slipping? They are to stop the slipping, grab a little bit more friction, but it's from it's from doing like it's from keeping it from flipping over. Like if I just tied it here, it would you would have tied it backwards and it would just be dangling. This will give you the half hitches on the on this bat just gives you more stability as you're carrying stuff. Like sometimes if you want to ventilate a house. You can, you know, say it's like a 14-story building. You can do what we just did and tie this, like a halogen tool or some big heavy metal object to it and have a, in the middle of a rope. And as you bring that up, the guy on the top of the roof in the bottom on the ground floor can basically whip that um, into a window to break it if they needed to. You know, there's just 100 different things you could do. Not to say that that's right or not. You definitely got to make sure the teams inside know what you're doing. But that would be my example. Okay, so we're almost done here. And press a hitch, clove hitch, uh, and radium load releasing hitch. That one I can't do because I need two carabiners. So do you guys have any questions on any of the knots we started with? Because that's all for today, my friends. So that is some of the knots we learned. We learned seven, eight, nine, ten. We learned 15 knots today, or maybe just refreshed on them. Who's out there in the chat room still? We got survival. Good review, thanks. You are welcome. Thanks for stopping by. HRM, weapons machinist. You still out there, my friend? Uh, STL Tony. Yeah. And we got Fuzzy to You. Grassy Knoll Club. Bowling was always his favorite. Yeah, there's a lot of people that love that. Oh, we never tied a bowling. Shit. We got to tie a bowling for hell's sakes. Oh, we did tie a bowling in the beginning. I think.
Okay. Or maybe that was before the video work. All right, let's do a bowling real quick. Thanks for reminding me, Grass Funeral Club. <clears throat> All right, so we got <clears throat> we got another piece of rope here. We're gonna make a six. All right, so if you were drawing with ink, you would go like this, and then the ink would touch on top of the other part that you already wrote on. So it would look like that. All right, so is your six covered? <laughs> All right. Let me see who else I forgot out there. Like a kid again. Was it you, Mr. Tommy Boy 9? Renneman Jr. 1, 2, 3. What's up? I haven't seen you in a while, my friend. Um, Trump again. Blah, blah, blah. Is this Tyrannies out there? It was. And I think I got everybody. Okay. So so we did a six. Here's a six. You're going to go up, around, around the back, and in. And when you pull this, this is where everybody screws up. They don't grab these two. You got to grab these two and pull this one. And you just built a fireman bowling. <clears throat> now, if you're in the Navy, you may have learned it this way. Okay, so a fireman bowling, the tail is on the outside of the circle, right? Or the loop or bite. A Navy bowling goes from the outside down through and ends up inside of the loop. That is the difference between a Navy bowling and a firefighting bowling or a fireman's bowling. What is this not useful for? Tons of different stuff. This was a knot that was designed, I think, by the Navy a long time ago to rescue people. So they could tie this knot around themselves real easy. You know, you throw a line into the water, whatever the case is. They can tie this basically one-handed right you go like this around through and then pull it and this would be around your body and then they would hoist you up and this would basically catch your armpits your armpits right you started on your waist and as you go here's your head these are your arms it would go under underneath your armpit and they could pluck you out of the water now this isn't very comfortable um, it's actually kind of nerve damaging, but if you're going to die because you're going to sink or drown or whatever the case is, I'll take that nerve damage over dying and drowning all day of the week. So you make a six. All right, there's a six. Here's the tail. I go up. I go around the back. And I go back down through the hole. And that is a bowling. Nice and simple, easy to use. It's not a great knot, it can slip pretty easy. Maybe on the next. Next thing we do, we'll do a running bowling. I'll get some carabiners. So we'll do a radium release hitch and a lot of other knots. But definitely practice these knots, guys. They're useful in everyday applications, whether tying crap down to your truck. We still got to go over the uh, a knot we should have learned today. It was a trucker's hitch, but we'll learn that on another one. So you guys have a great day or night, depending on where you're at in the world. Uh, appreciate it. Take care. Have a good one. And thank you guys for joining in. Appreciate it. Thanks, Survival, for uh, talking about the Klim, Klim Heist. Klim Heist is also the Machard. 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 See? That's the thing about ropes and knots. There's a lot of knots that are named differently that are – Usually, sometimes, 
even the same knot. So I appreciate you guys uh, showing up. You guys did good. I didn't get to see. Hopefully you guys learned some knots, maybe something different. Sounds like a lot of you guys already knew some. Um, well, like a kid again is either back or that's all we got for today. Sorry, folks. Park's closed. <laughs> see you guys on another one. Appreciate you showing up for sure, though. Thanks. Bye. Hey, make sure you guys like this video. Maybe someone that uh, could use learning some knots could definitely use it. But uh, give it a thumbs up. Thumbs up. Appreciate it. Peace.